Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live in a world of Ain Shalom. There is no peace. And I tell you guys, uh, as I watched Mike Pence's statement this evening about uh, Venezuela, I'm really beginning to wonder more and more if even United States policy is not more like what we see in Revelation chapter 13 here, especially verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Nobody might buy or sell, say it again, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. I mean, isn't this really what sanctions are all about? Isn't it, it's kind of ironic. Uh, Israel, and, and listen, I'm not for sanctioning Israel either. If, if there's any sanctions that should be done in the world, we should sanction military uh, the sale of military arms around the world. That's really what sanctioning should be. Uh, you know, listen, you want to make weapons, make them for yourself. You shouldn't be allowed to sell them to nobody else in the world because uh, all it is is going around killing your brother. Blow your neighbor up, blow your brother up, blow your sister up. That's all it does. And Israel is fights like crazy against certain Israelis in the nation that have promoted uh, the BDS, the boycotting of Israeli products. Now, I've never been for boycotting Israeli products because I realize that boycotting Israel hurts the individual. It hurts the people of Israel. And this is one reason why I've not been for boycotting of Israel either. But neither am I for boycotting other nations such as Venezuela or Syria or many others because what happens at the end of the day, those that get injured in these sanctions are the people. And, but I can't help but think of what the scripture says. No man might be able to buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. And is it interesting how the United States, when they sanction all these nations or individuals and other nations, if you dare go against their sanctions, they'll sanction you as well. You just don't play by the book. Russia, Russia's suffering as well. And although they may put on a good face up front, Russia, Russia is suffering from sanctions. There's no doubt about it. Because not only is Russia sanctioned by the United States, any other nation that we do business with, they're sanctioned if they do anything to help Russia, with the exception of Israel. That's kind of interesting. Israel can violate all the sanctions they want, and nothing happens to Israel. Hmm. We're going to go into something about that on our Shabbat teaching, which will be actually tomorrow morning during the Shabbat time. But I wanted to share this with you because I watched here, uh, and, and let me let you let me let you listen to this just for a moment here. This is uh, uh, Mike uh, Mike uh, Pence, Vice President of the United States, showing how that the United States they're ready to go take care of military action, and John Bolton even talks about sending Maduro to Guantanamo Bay. Then I'm going to get into this sanctions issue because you need to know why Venezuela is in the trouble. It's not because of socialism. It has nothing to do with the socialism of the nation. It was because they have been under sanctions since, what, 2006? Totally destroying the economy of the people. No wonder why they can't afford to buy anything. No wonder why the people are willing to accept anything America gives them. Because after all, those that are for Juan Guaido realize that, hey, if we get one in, the U.S. will lift the sanctions and we might get a paycheck once in our life there. You know, I'm not just saying these things to be saying them either, friends. I say this because right out of Israel, from those that are in the know with Israeli intelligence, they have been telling me for months, I've said this to you long before we got to this point with Venezuela, that the United States and Israel both had ops on the ground in the country to destabilize the nation and that they had fully intended to take the oil for the United States. And as I said it to you, quote unquote, the oil, the U.S. needs the oil more than they do. So do you really think it's about for the people of Venezuela? No. Not at all. Listen first what Mike Penn says, and then I want to share with you a little bit of the historical side of what we've done to destroy this nation, like all other nations that we continue to destroy around the world. States has made it clear. The safety and security of President Guaido and his family are of great importance to the American people.
Just yesterday, Maduro threatened President Guaido's family, sending paramilitary police to his home. But we know that President Guaido and the Venezuelan people will never be intimidated, and neither will we. At President Trump's direction, the United States has imposed sanctions on more than 50 current and former Venezuelan officials, targeting known drug runners and human rights abusers and government thieves who've enriched themselves by impoverishing the people. Since let, let, let me clarify something there from Mike Pence. I know good and well what the United States government has done that also padded the pockets of at least 30 politicians that I know of, of your illegal drug activities, smuggling drugs into the United States from uh, uh, El Salvador, Ecuador, uh, Nicaragua, and other places there, and all the kickbacks as you laundered the money. I also know that there's some evidence sitting out there right now that would implicate some of those in the current administration for laundering drug money once again. So, you know, it's kind of like interesting. They throw stones at everybody else, and I'm not saying Maduro's not doing it. He probably is. The problem is, is the politicians in America are not getting their kickbacks, and that's where the trouble really begins. And yeah, all that drug and nonsense that goes on, yeah, you bring it into America. Maduro does it. Americans do it. American military does it. I've got some very interesting information coming to me very soon about Afghanistan as well. Yeah, I happen to find out exactly what the drug ring run is by the U.S. military and all those that you use involved in smuggling all that drugs of the poppy and all the other heroin out of the country there into the United States. So yeah, there's a lot of dirty laundry in this country as well. The problem is I think Maduro probably kind of sidestepped your policy on this and therefore maybe that's the only way he's making his money right now so yeah he is a criminal no doubt just like we have in american politicians as well i guess that troubles you all soil is the lifeblood of that corrupt regime this week the united states of america sanctioned venezuela's state-owned oil company venezuela's oil belongs to the venezuelan people let's and remember, as I told you already from those in the knows and the Israeli uh, uh, officials that uh, I've been speaking with have let me know, no, that's for America. They need it more than the Venezuelans do, quote, unquote. Nice, isn't it? Very nice to know all that. Let's go, though. Listen, this was done by Global Research, and this article is uh, here on August 15, 2018. The United States destroys Venezuela's economy. All right, sanctions are war by other means, invisible to most eyes. Corporate media in this country delivered a steady onslaught. I'm going to blow this up so you guys can make sure you guys can see this as well. All right. All right. So they did this uh, uh, anti-Venezuela propaganda, the Washington uh, Post fumes about Venezuelan pirates, while the New York Times reported that Ecuador is overwhelmed by dis uh, dis desperate Venezuelan migrants. Unfortunately, the propaganda has succeeded to a large degree. Socialism doesn't work. Just look at Venezuela. It's an all too common trope. It is rare that anyone with public platform reveals a simple truth. Venezuela's problems were created by the United States government first during the Obama administration and now continuing under Trump's. It is sanctions against the Venezuelan government and its people and have created hyperinflation, hunger, and devastated health care system that was once the envy of that region. Sanctions are war by other means, invisible to most eyes. There are no troops, bullets, bombs, drones, or military weapons, but sanctions are as deadly as any military invasion. Trump may do that yet which is now what's going on now. 2015, Barack Obama issued executive order declaring Venezuela to be an unusual and extraordinary threat to the national security and foreign policy of the United States. Why they didn't go along with the terrorist uh, act that uh, Bush had enacted after 9-11. 
Yeah, that's right, because maybe they realized that there was something sinister going on in our country and that it was not really something that was done by the terrorists in the Middle East, but rather by the terrorists that were at home in the United States. Kind of reminds me of one particular Israeli guy claiming to be a believer in Yeshua that said he was in uh, uh, the Twin Towers the day before and made this very ominous statement. I wonder how the world will change when something hits this Twin Towers, hits these, excuse me, hits these Twin Towers. Wow, no, that's not a prophecy. That is an omission of being there. And of course, well, we won't get into that right now. I think you catch the drift of what we're talking about. And then also you have another, and this is many articles that are out there, Sanctions of Mass Destruction, America's War on Venezuela. American economic sanctions have been the worst crime against humanity since World War II. America's economy sanctions have killed more innocent people than all nuclear, biological, chemical weapons ever used in the history of mankind. The fact that for America, the issue of Venezuelan oil is not democracy will surprise only those who watch the news and ignore the history. Venezuela has the world's largest oil reserves on the planet. America seeks to control uh, Venezuela because it sits atop a strategic intersection of the Caribbean South and Central American worlds. Control of the nation has always been a remarkably effective way to project power into the, the, uh, these three regions and beyond. Okay, now... It could, you, I'm going to have these articles there in the description below for you. But the whole point is, is one, we don't want Russia in the hemisphere there. And Russia was looking at building a base there at the invitation of uh, Maduro. Uh, I don't think Russia is really going to build a base there, though, so long as there's this type of contention. And, uh, and granted, no, I don't want a Russian military base there either. Uh, just like I didn't want one in Cuba. And yes, Maduro does have some pretty sinister friends. But the only thing is, is we just dress our sinister uh, politicians up in a bunch of nice suits and call them a bunch of Democrats. And democracy is moving full steam ahead. Let alone all the crimes that are committed behind the scenes. And I know this goes not just Republican, it's Democrat and Republican just alike. I've seen their crimes. I saw their embezzlement, their money laundering, and their drug running, and all the other schemes that they do. And of course, like I said, even the evidence I have seen to this day where it continues to go on, and yes, there's still a lot of wealthy politicians, pockets are padded. Yes, even some of those people that are very close to President Trump and that of uh, President Putin as well. Yes, some of the Russian oligarchs who've been involved in investing in properties, etc., uh, and also investing in companies with some of President Trump's former friends. Uh, yeah, you know, kind of like Rick Davis, Rick Gates, uh, Paul Manafort, and that obvious, that little ominous little deal that was done over there with their company from the Cayman Islands that purchased that telecoms communication company in Ukraine, only to make sure they got Yanukovych into office to drain the money out of uh, Ukraine. After they got through draining that, then they used the telecoms communication company that the Americans owned, uh, uh, which they didn't pay back the Russian oligarchs all either. Maybe this is why the dispute came up in Ukraine became a, uh, a slow falling little uh, disaster over there. But that extra 20 million they got from the Russian oligarchs of Putin's friends ended up being invested in another property that, well, you wouldn't believe who actually owns that property. We'll save that for another day. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Listen, if you want to support the broadcast, We'll definitely tell you the truth. Not going to beat around the bush about it. Just tell you just like it is. You can donate via online, IsraeliNewsLive.org, or check out our address right here below the monitor there. You can send it by mail. We'll also be putting the address on our website very soon, uh, as well as other means to be able to donate to help you guys to make it simpler. And I think also right below the subscribe button on YouTube, I think you can click that button as well and donate that way. Thank you for watching. I'm Steve Benoon, Israeli News Live, Arab Tov.